Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com. And in this lesson, we're going to take a look at creating a landscape painting using water mixable oil paints. Now, for this demonstration, I'll be working on an oil primed linen panel. And this is a small panel. It's only eight inches by 10 inches. And in this painting, we're going to try to uh, incorporate some expressive brushstrokes and really try to guide the viewer's eye to a specific focal point within the scene. We're also going to try to build off of contrast using complementary colors. So we're going to have some contrast between the reds and greens that happen in this painting. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the process. We'll begin by taking a look at our palette here. We're going to add an additional color later in the process, but for now we're going to go ahead and start off with these colors. Now I've used this palette in the past, so instead of scraping off the colors, I just added a bit more. We're using some burnt umber, French ultramarine, burnt sienna, cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, titanium white, olive green, and also some sap green initially. We'll add cadmium yellow medium later in the process. Now this palette is just a piece of glass and there's a gray paper taped underneath it just so that we've got a nice neutral value there underneath it so that we can see the colors and the values of those colors a little bit easier so we can make comparisons. Now I'm going to start with a little bit of medium and I'm going to use a bit of the burnt umber and some of the French ultramarine to create a nice dark neutral color. Now I'm going to use this neutral color just to sketch out some of the areas of darker value that we see in the painting and for the most part we see these on the upper portion of the picture plane. Now I'm going to begin here by just establishing the horizon line and of course this is where the ground meets the sky and for the most part in this particular image a lot of the horizon is obscured by lines of trees or groupings of trees that we see overlapping the horizon line but there is a grouping of trees just underneath the horizon line that has a lot of dark values here so we're going to go ahead and establish this shape uh, using that combination of dark brown and a dark blue which of course is burnt umber and French ultramarine. Now, of course, in your own mixture, you can allow some of the blue to dominate or you can allow some of the brown to dominate. If you want a warmer neutral color, of course, you would allow more of the burnt umber to dominate the mixture. And of course, if you want a cooler uh, underpainting, of course, you could you allow the French ultramarine to dominate the mixture. Now, of course, as you can see, I'm using a liberal amount of medium here. This is giving this initial application somewhat of a, a transparent look. You can see a lot of the white of the canvas showing through these initial applications. Of course, as you can see, we're not focusing on any of the details right now. We're just basically concentrating on shapes of darker tone that we see. And I'm allowing the white of the canvas to act as basically a placeholder for some of the lighter values, which we're going to apply over the top. Now, once we've got our basic dark values blocked in. We're going to go ahead and start at the top of the picture plane and then we'll gradually work our way down the picture plane. So basically we're going to start with the background, we're going to move on to the middle ground, and then we'll address the foreground last. Now this image of course is dominated by the middle ground and the foreground, so we're going to be spending most of our time there, but for now we'll go ahead and start with the sky. So I'm going to use a mixture of French ultramarine and titanium white of course to establish our sky color, our background color. So you can see here on the palette, I just started with a, a mixture that had a little bit more titanium white than I liked in it. So I added just a little bit more of the French ultramarine. Of course, since we're working with oils, we can always manipulate this color, adding more titanium white or more French ultramarine to find the blue that we're after. Then of course we can start right at the top of the canvas and begin blocking in our sky color here using a filbert brush. I failed to mention that I'm using a filbert brush here and I'm going to be using this larger brush as long as I possibly can throughout the painting, getting as much color down on the surface as possible in the shortest amount of time of course. Now you can see I'm going back with a slightly uh, a color that's a little bit more saturated. So there's a little bit more of the French ultramarine here and I'm going to work some of this darker more blue color uh, down from the top of the picture plane and a lighter version up from the bottom portion just above the horizon line. This will create a very subtle transition from a slightly darker blue to a slightly lighter blue closer to the horizon line. Now we'll go ahead and begin blocking in some of the shapes for the clouds and we're going to keep this painting relatively loose. So we'll start with a bit of titanium white. We're going to add a bit of yellow ochre and we're also going to pull in just a touch of cadmium red medium. Now 
And you can see here I've pulled a little bit of that mixture over. So I basically have two different versions of this color. I have one that's a little bit more dominated with the yellow ochre and another that's a little bit more dominated by the red. Now I'm just going to start blocking in these shapes of clouds here. They don't have to be perfect by any means. We're going to keep these strokes loose and suggestive. Now of course with every cloud there is light that hits the cloud and that creates areas of subtle highlights. In this particular case our subtle highlights are existing mainly on the left side of the picture plane because our light source of course is originating from the left side of the picture plane. So once we've got some of those initial shapes of clouds blocked in we can go back with some of those highlights, uh, just a more intense mixture there with a little bit more of the titanium white mixed in to create those highlights. And then we'll move on to some sap green as we begin to work our way down to the edge of the horizon line. So now we're going to begin addressing some of the middle ground. Now these areas that we're addressing next are far away from the viewer and when we're dealing with areas that are farther away from the viewer of course they're going to be lighter in value. So we're going to use uh, lighter versions of these colors. So we're going to be using tints of these colors. So you can see I've brought in a little bit of the titanium white in there and also a bit of the yellow ochre. And I've also mixed a version of this green with a little bit of the burnt sienna. So you can see here on the palette I have a variety of different values and slightly different hues to choose from. Then of course right over the top of our initial applications we'll begin applying these different versions of greens. Of course some of these greens are going to be dominated a little bit more by some yellow ochre and of course a little bit more titanium white. We're just going to create quite a bit of variety back here in the background but, but we're going to keep the values relatively light as well of course because we want to create that illusion of space. So once we've blocked in our initial applications, we'll get a little bit lighter here. Again, thinking about the areas of highlight that we're going to see on some of these distant trees. And for the most part, these highlights are going to exist on the left side of each one of the trees that we see back there. But some of those highlights are going to make their way around on the right side as well. Now, of course, we're going to need to establish some shadows here as well. So we're going to bring in a little bit of olive green and a touch of burnt umber to create some of these shadows. Now, of course, these shadows are going to be quite a bit more subtle than what we see here in the foreground. So they're still going to be relatively light as far as the value goes. We'll continue just working back and forth, adding lighter and darker values and also establishing a variety of different greens. Now of course you can uh, manipulate the green a little bit by adding more yellow ochre, of course, to create more of a warmer green. And you can add a bit more of the French ultramarine to the mixture to create more of a cooler green. We're going to see some of those cooler greens in the area of shadow. And then of course there are some open fields in between each one of these lines of trees and in these open fields we're going to see a color that's dominated by yellow ochre of course. We're going to pull a little bit of green into those areas as well, some of the sap green. And we're also going to bring in a little bit of red using a bit of the burnt sienna. You'll notice that our brush strokes are mostly horizontal for these open fields and the brush strokes that we use for the trees of course go in different directions but for the most part they're mainly vertical. This will create additional contrast of course and help our viewer to understand that we're dealing with some trees and some open fields. Just as we did with the distant trees, we'll try to create a variety of different hues here as we work our way closer to the foreground. So you'll notice that I'm allowing the mixture to be dominated by the sap green in areas and allowing it to be dominated by the yellow ochre and making some lighter versions as well as we work our way down. Of course we're going to see a little bit more variety here in the background uh, because we've got those fields that I mentioned before and we've got these trees. There's a lot of stuff happening especially up here in the upper left hand corner of the picture plane. You can see I'm adding a little bit more of the titanium white right over the top of these applications to make the values a little bit lighter, again trying to increase the illusion of depth within the scene. Now as we work down towards the foreground you'll notice that we increase the contrast a little bit more because when we see objects that are closer to the viewer typically we see greater contrast in the value and of course there's going to be a greater intensity in the color as well. 
All right, now we've worked our way over to the middle portion of the picture plane, the upper portion of the, the picture plane, where we've got that grouping of trees that exist there. And I'm going to start with mostly darker values here. I'm allowing some of the French ultramarine to dominate the mixture here to create some cooler shadows. Now, of course, just as we did with our first line of trees or our several initial lines of trees in the distant background, we'll start uh, adding a little bit more variety to this line of trees as well. Of course, that includes adding some highlights and some shadows just to have some areas where we can kind of understand the form of these trees. We don't want to add details, of course. We want these details to be insinuated. And we, we do this with just basic shapes of lighter values and darker values. We'll of course do the same thing with our trees that are a little bit closer to the viewer. Again, just manipulating the values, adding lighter values and darker values. We'll also add a little bit more variety to these greens as well by allowing some more yellow, some more of the yellow ochre of course into the mixture and in the shadowed areas allowing some of the French ultramarine to dominate the mixture. This of course will lead to the illusion of cooler shadows and warmer highlights and ultimately lead to the illusion of the form of these trees. Now, of course, it might be tempting to reach for that smaller round brush at this point, but I'm still working here with the larger Filbert brush. I want th this image to have expressive brush strokes, and of course, I want the details to be suggested. Ultimately, we're going to pull focus to that lone hay bale in the field where we're going to have most likely the highest level of detail. We're going to have the highest level of detail on that hay bale and also on some of the flowers that are closest to the viewer. And speaking of flowers, we're ready to start addressing some of the, the red flowers that we see in the upper right hand portion of the picture plane. We'll start here with a bit of the cadmium red medium. There's just a touch of burnt umber in this mixture just to tone it down a little bit. And there's also a few patches of a brighter yellow green in these sections as well. So we'll add these as well as we begin to establish some of those distant flowers off there on the right side of the picture plane. And then of of course, we're going to bring some of that yellow green down here closer to the foreground as well. Even with just a small about small amount of red and green on the surface now, now clearly there's a lot of green on the surface, but with just a small amount of red at this point, we can see how much that red is going to contrast against the green. Of course, red and green are complementary colors, and if you want a painting to pop, you can use uh, a series of complementary colors or a couple of complementary colors to create additional pop here. And you can see I am adding a little bit of a more intense version of that cadmium red medium here that's not muted with the burnt umber to uh, make it make it contrast a little bit stronger. So this is going to be a recurring th theme throughout the rest of the painting. We're going to continue to add uh, greens and reds, of course, as we work down in the foreground where we're seeing more of those flowers. And uh, we're going to create more of that contrast, that color contrast as we go through the process. But for now, of course, it's back to this little grouping of trees here. Again, just continuing to refine some of the lighter and darker areas. And there's a bit of that field of red flowers peeking through an area. So that's why you see a little bit of that red carried over into those, uh, those trees there in the middle ground. And for now, we'll continue working our way down the picture plane, again, creating a variety of different greens as we work our way down. So of course we can create a slightly cooler green by adding a little bit more of the French ultramarine to sap green. And of course we can create a warmer green by adding a little bit more of the yellow ochre. And as I've got a little bit more of the green on the surface, I see I need to go back and do some additional work here to some of the trees in the middle ground or the upper middle ground. So again, I'm adding just some slight highlights here and there. And then working around our lone hay bale here, we'll continue adding additional greens here in the uh, middle ground and uh, all the way down into portions of the foreground as well.
And of course, as we are adding additional colors and values, filling up more of the white of the canvas, we can make some more accurate comparisons between the values and colors that we have in place. So you can see at this point, I'm adding a slightly darker section, a slightly darker shape that I can see in the photo reference there, just in front of the trees in the upper portion of the middle ground. And there's also some darker greens, of course, as we work closer to the foreground as well. Now, at this point, uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of variety in the greens. And as we continue to work through the painting, you'll see that we continue to push the variety in the greens in the foreground. Now, just as I did with uh, some of the trees in the upper portion of the middle ground, I see some of the, the trees in the distant background need some additional work. So I'm back here adding some more contrast in the values. And then it's back to the trees in the upper middle ground as well. And you can see I'm going to fiddle with these for a few minutes. So I'll speed up the video for a couple of minutes just so you can see where I'm adding some of the light and dark values. This is somewhat of a back and forth, and I'm also playing around with some of the brush strokes and so on. And you can also see that I have switched over to a smaller brush to do so, so I'm no longer using the larger filbert brush. Now, at this point, I feel like I need to bring a little bit more of a brighter, warmer green into the image. So now I have introduced a little bit of the cadmium yellow here. And uh, this is going to add a little bit more of a brighter green to the scene. So I'm mixing it with a bit of sap green and, of course, a bit of titanium white to create a stronger highlight. The introduction of this yellow is going to change the, the painting quite a bit. As you can see, as I'm starting to add some of these greens here, they really stand out at this point. Uh, but as we continue to add them to some of the other trees within the scene, they start to feel a little bit more harm, harmonious. And the light within the scene starts to feel a little bit brighter as well because of this particular yellow. Now we'll bring a bit of this freshly mixed green down into the foreground as well uh, because we want to incorporate it throughout the painting. We don't really want this one bright yellow green to be in just one area because that will really make that area stand out. We want the painting to feel harmonious. So typically when you add one color in one area of a painting, you, you most likely want to add it into another area unless you want to create a very strong focal point, of course. Now, of course, we're going to continue putting focus on the middle ground and the foreground here, and we're going to create a little bit more variety here as I'm incorporating a little bit more of the yellow ochre in the mixture. And this is basically a base color, as you'll see in a few minutes. We're basically just establishing some of the colors underneath some of the more textural brush strokes that we're going to apply over the top as we continue to develop the field. So there is slight variety here, but as you'll see in a moment, as we begin to develop the foreground, we're going to continue to, to develop more variety as well. So again, just adding some lighter areas, some darker areas, some areas that are a little bit more dominated by the yellow ochre and titanium white, just to create a slight bit of variety here. All right, now it's back to the cadmium yellow, of course, with some sap green as well. We're going to use a little bit of medium here to um, make the paint a little bit easier to spread and also some titanium white. We're going to start establishing some of these lighter green areas that we see on the upper portion of the middle ground. Again, we're carefully working around that lone hay bale. That lone hay bale, of course, will eventually become our focal point. So you can see here that the greens that we used around the hay bale have somewhat of a cooler, mintier feel about them, but that's just because of the contrast that's creating, being created between the more yellow dominated greens just below it. So actually these greens are just a little bit lighter and that's because of the titanium white making it appear a little bit cooler. At this point, I'm establishing some of the darker shapes that I see throughout. Now, of course, these darker shapes kind of help to guide the viewer's eye through the piece, but more on that in just a moment. 
At this point, we're ready to start addressing the hay bale. Finally, right? <laughs> so we'll start here with a bit of burnt umber. There's just a slight bit of uh, yellow ochre in the mixture as well. And I'm using a very small flat brush to establish the shadowed side of the hay bale. Now for the lighter side of the hay bale, I'm going to incorporate a little bit more of the titanium white in the mixture, of course. Again, this is just burnt umber with yellow ochre with a, a healthy amount of titanium white in the mixture to create the highlighted side of the hay bale. So just as we did with the shadowed side, we'll start by just establishing a shape here. Then when, once we've got a shape in place, we'll go ahead and start adding some of the details. And the details are basically just, again, just light and dark shapes. So you can see here I'm incorporating a slightly lighter shape inside of the darker shadow, and also a few highlights that exist where portions of the hay bale basically stick out enough to capture some of the light coming from the left side of the picture plane. Then of course, I'll continue to work back and forth with the dark and light values until I arrive at a shape and texture that I'm fairly happy with. There is just a touch of burnt sienna that was also added there just to create a little bit more variety. And then of course, we'll drop a little shadow there behind it using a darker version of our green. Now we're ready to start bringing out some of that color contrast as we briefly discussed before. So we're going to go to the cadmium red medium. We're also going to add a little bit of burnt umber for some darker versions of this color, darker values of this color, and also the titanium white for some lighter versions. Now to add a little bit of variety in the color, we'll also incorporate just a touch of yellow ochre. And then, of course, we'll just start creating shapes of this color in different areas. And, of course, we're going to add a bit of variety, just as we've done throughout, using lighter and darker versions of this particular color, and also versions of this color that have a little bit more of the yellow ochre in it as well for additional variety. Now, of course, most of the strokes that we apply to the surface, especially in the upper portion of the middle ground, are going to be horizontal. But as we work closer to the foreground, of course, we can have a little bit more space between each one of the flowers. And you can see that they're further spread out, of course. So again, you can clearly see this, that as we work towards the foreground, we're going to have more space between individual flowers. We're going to see some of these individual flowers. And then as we work back away from the viewer, these uh, the spaces in between the flowers, of course, completely disappear and we're ba basically left with uh, horizontal strokes. All right, now we're ready to start developing some of the textures of the field. And to do so, we're going to create the illusion of individual grass blades. We're not going to paint individual grass blades, but to create this illusion, we're going to be creating a variety of different values of green and also different versions of the green too. So in the darker areas, we're going to allow some of the French ultramarine to dominate, making a darker, cooler shadows. And in some of the lighter areas, of course, we're going to allow a little bit more of the titanium white to dominate with little hints of yellow here and there. Now, of course, since the grass is growing up, we're going to pull strokes mostly vertical um, with a few horizontal strokes here and there just to break up the space. But as you can see here, I'm adding a bit of the ultramarine in areas to create some of those darker values and then also some of those lighter greens as well, just pulling strokes up very quickly and loosely. And you can see the illusion of the texture of uh, the the grassy field starting to take shape. We could also use the end of the brush, as you can see here, to pull up some additional strokes. Of course, this is just basically moving the wet oil paint around on the surface. So we'll continue doing so, and we'll work our way back towards the lone hay bale, of course. Again, just incorporating a variety of different greens. Some of the greens have a little bit more yellow, some have a little bit more white, and some have a little bit more blue. And of course, our strokes are going to become a little bit more horizontal as we work back uh, towards the areas of the painting that are further away from the viewer. And you can see there's a transition where we begin to make strokes that are more vertical closer to the viewer.
All right, we're going to now start thinking about adding some elements that will help pull our viewer's eye to our focal point, the hay bale, of course. Now, we already have some elements that are helping us out with this. We have the, that tree line or that grouping of trees towards the upper middle portion of the picture plane. There's also a an area where the greener portion of the field meets the more yellow portion of the field, and that is also creating somewhat of a guiding line in these locations. But what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate our brush strokes. We're also going to scratch into the oil paint to create some more directional strokes to help encourage our, our viewer's eye to move to the focal point. So we're basically going to try to manipulate the way a viewer interacts with our piece and move them to the focal point. So in this particular case, I'm going to start uh, adding brush strokes that kind of curve around, especially in the lower right hand portion of the picture plane, become a little bit more vertical as we work our way over to the left side of the picture plane and then curve back towards the middle on the left side of the picture plane as well. Now this might give the impression that the wind is blowing and, and basically moving the grass blades around, but of course our ultimate goal here is to encourage the viewer's eye to move to our focal point. So of course you can have some fun with this, uh, be loose of course, and as you can see here the texture of our field is really starting to take shape as we're starting to add uh, these guiding lines into the surface. Um, and it's really not a matter of painting individual grass blades as I mentioned earlier, it's basically just a collection of different values and the relationships of those values and of course the directional strokes help as well to create this illusion of texture. So you should never feel like you have to spell everything out for your viewer. Uh, of course, our minds fill in a lot of those details for us on our own. Now, at this point, I'm going back with the brush and just kind of cleaning up some of the scratched marks that I put into the surface. Of course, I want some of them to stay in place, but I also want to make sure that they're not too clearly defined. So I'm just moving some of the wet oil paint around on the surface, just making them a little bit softer in areas. All right, then it's back to uh, our cadmium red medium. And of course, there's a bit of variety here as well. So there's uh, a few applications that I'm applying here that have a little bit more of the yellow ochre in them or, or mixed in with the, the cadmium red medium and also uh, bits of titanium white as well to make some highlighted uh, areas as well. But I've switched over to a small round brush finally at this point in the process. And I'm just going to add additional flowers over the top of our textured field. Now a few of our green patches or green shapes in the distant field need to be pulled out a little bit more at this point. So I'm going back in up to the upper right hand portion of the picture plane just adding a few more hints of, of some of those green patches that we see up there. Of course this is going to increase the contrast between the red flowers. And then finally the last bit here we're going to go back to our focal point and just refine it a little bit more adding a little bit more yellow ochre and of course I'm going to intensify the highlight a little bit more too to make the light feel a little bit stronger. Then I'll quickly blend that transition between the stronger highlight at the top and the, the slightly less intense highlight at the bottom. Then we'll make some of that light peeking around the side of the hay bale just a little bit stronger as well. And after our finishing touches on our focal point, our painting of a field of flowers with a lone hay bale is now complete. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. If you're new to the channel, I would encourage you to subscribe. We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting media and subject matter here on this channel. We also have a wonderful membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses, which include videos and step-by-step -step illustrated eBooks. We also have weekly live lessons, which are presented in series and, and all are recorded. So you can go back into our vault, which dates back to 2012, actually. We have weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and we also have a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. If you want to check out our program, there's a link in the description below. And if you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, you can do so as well. There's a link in the description below this video. 
Thanks again for watching. And as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.